Okay, guys. Uh, welcome back again in the third uh, lecture of our training, Lean Six Sigma. Today we have uh, four topics, but we will discuss only uh, two of them, and we will keep the two for for tomorrow. So we have a uh, reason behind starting a Six Sigma project, and we have. Uh, we will see some fact about uh, Six Sigma project. Okay, check uh, delivery note 320 and 359. Okay, uh, we have taken two sets of slow. Was, I will mute your microphone. Okay, okay guys. So uh, there is a reason why you will start your uh, project in Six Sigma. So why the company need to start project on Lean uh, six sigma. So there is uh, some uh, fact we need to know, and there is uh, some reason make you go for uh, six sigma. So there is uh, there is a two uh, two uh, type of uh, of a problem. One of them consider as six sigma project, and one of them it will not consider as six sigma project. So uh, the main reason to start a uh, Six Sigma project, it's a two type of problem as I mentioned. So which one of them we will use and which one of them we will depend or which one of them uh, it, will, it, will, it, will may, it will be the main reason of starting the uh, Six Sigma project. Okay, so uh, there is a problem. Okay, guys, we know we know the root cause of this problem and also we know the solution for that problem this is the one uh, one type of the problem on the other side there is a problem but unknown root cause and even we don't have any solution uh, for that root cause so which way one of them will consider as a, a six sigma world for the first one which is a Whenever you have a problem, you know the root cause of the problem. You remember yesterday we, we, we strike one example and we said uh, we have we have a um, uh, poor uh, performance for the for the salesman. His target is one million per month, but his achievement is only two hundred thousand. So there is a, there is the issue, and we said he is having a problem in his car. So his car is always stuck in the road. So instead of visiting seven customers per day, he is visiting only one customer per day. So this is the root cause. So this is the problem. We know the root cause, okay? So in Six Sigma, they will tell you, there is, we call it GDI. GDI, what means just do it. So if you know the problem, it exists, and you know the root cause for that problem. So why you bother us and bother yourself and spend money and spend time to solve the root cause that you already know, the root cause that you already have a solution for. So the solution for this one, replace the car and halas, done. No need to go for a Six Sigma project. We call it just do it. Since you know the, the, the root cause, so just do it, just go for the solution. Just go and replace the car. So don't waste your time. Don't waste uh, uh, the company resources. Go for the new car and, and uh, your problem has been solved. So this is not considered as a Six Sigma project. You will not work on, on this uh, as a Six Sigma project. Uh, later on, we will know there is some condition uh, about uh, six sigma project what is a sigma sigma project uh, anyway in the b in the other type of the problem we have a problem but we doesn't know what is the root cause for that problem and we don't have any solution uh, for that problem this is we'll consider as six sigma project so 
Six Sigma project, or the main reason to start Six Sigma project, that there is a problem, unknown root cause and unknown solution. But if you know the, the root cause for the problem, and you have a solution for that problem, this is will not consider as Six Sigma project. So again, Six Sigma project, the main reason to start Six Sigma project, that you have a problem with unknown reason, unknown root cause, and unknown solution. So you need to work for six months, for eight months, uh, restructuring process, new procedure, designing new uh, flowchart until you get the problem solved, until you get the root cause has been eliminated. So this is the main uh, uh, reason for Start Six Sigma. And this is today the, the, in the Arabic group, they told me, all of them, all of them, they receive this in their question for the examination. So they ask them for in the examination, what is the reason for starting uh, project uh, Six Sigma? They give them four, uh, four choice. One of them is the problem with the unknown cause and unknown solution. So you have to choose this one. So here, unknown cause, unknown problem, go for Six Sigma project. Okay, so in Six Sigma project itself, we need, there's a sum uh, in, in this space is we need to determine what is the root cause and determine what is the solution for the, for the root cause. And where we will, we will make this one in the analyze space. So in the analyze space, okay, you will identify the root cause and also you will identify uh, the problem solution. This is in the analyze space. And uh, in, in, uh, improve, you will apply the solution and the control, you will control this solution to guarantee not going to the, to the start point. So in case it is a problem, again, there is a problem, clear solution and uh, the solution are clear and there is, there is no need to start project six sigma. This is what we get in case of the problem are clear and the solution are clear, then no need to go for a Six Sigma project. Therefore, Six Sigma project deal only with the problem whose is uh, cause unknown and solution is unknown. So if you have this one, just go ahead and start a Six Sigma project. Okay, so there is some fact about uh, Six Sigma project what we need to uh, to know about six sigma project it's about a group project not an individual project no matter what the the uh, no matter what the uh, qualification you have what the skills you have what is your position uh, you cannot do project six sigma alone project six sigma it's uh, based on a group based team project so you cannot do it alone because later on, next slide, we will know there is some condition about uh, forming the team for Six Sigma uh, project. So to start any Six Sigma project that need to form a team. So without a team, you cannot uh, make a Six Sigma project. And there is a structure of the Six Sigma team. We will show it in the next slide. So. Uh, this is will be your member in the Six Sigma uh, project. So just uh, to remind you, this is uh, yesterday or yesterday before we discussed uh, what is the yellow, what he's doing, the green, what he's doing, what his function, and black and master black and the champion. So uh, today we will discuss a uh, little bit about this uh, belt and what is what is their function inside the, uh, our uh, project Six Sigma team. So in this team, we have something, uh, we have this guy, champion. Okay. This is a champion, the champion, who is a champion? The champion who, who is the one is leading the company? Who is the one in the top of the company? He can be the CEO, he can be the owner, or he can be the general manager. So this guy has to be always, always in the top of the, Six Sigma uh, team. 
So a uh, decision maker or a champion or on the vision or a CEO or whatever, they have to be on the board of director or it has to be uh, in the top of Six Sigma project. So always the top of the Six Sigma project uh, are the CEO or the organization or the board of the director. So the one who is leading the company, the one who is leading the organization, so he will be on the top of Six Sigma project. And later on, we will know why you need him to be uh, in the Six Sigma project and even to be in the top, to be as a leader for Six Sigma project. Because you need some tools. You need a budget for that project because you will work uh, six or eight months. So this is a time and time equal money and money, uh, it's about a cost and you need his approve for this cost. Also because they are, uh, they are uh, ones driving the change and uh, innovative across the organization. Because you remember yesterday we, we said there is about uh, the, the four law, the law of collecting the data. You remember the data management. In the data management, we said there is a, uh, there is a culture, uh, mindset culture, which is before you leave, the company after you finish your uh, Six Sigma project, you need uh, to guarantee that the continuous improvement methodology has been adopted in this company. So who will take this adoption? Who will, who will drive this change? So the one who is leading the company, the CEO, for example, he will drive this, uh, this change. For example, why now we are doing this, this uh, training? because Mr. Saleh, he approved this training. So why he approved this training? Because he is the one who is driving the change. He want to make change inside our company. So that's why he is, more, he is taking the, uh, he is taking the, the, the driving uh, of this change. And he is adopting the, the culture of continuous improvement. So if you don't have these guys in the, in the top of your Six Sigma project, so your Six Sigma project will be go, to a different direction. Also because uh, the ones who plan and implement is strategic planning. So this is also, it will be uh, useful for you to, uh, to take them with you in the Six Sigma project because they, they are the one who is making the planning and strategic and they, they are the one who is making the vision uh, and, the, and the target for 10 years, for 15 years from now. So they have, uh, they have a knowledge and they have a planning for the future. So it's better to be with you uh, in your Six Sigma project. Also uh, important that uh, executive decision maker to be in the head of the, of the Six Team uh, project, because there is some decision you have to take during, during the course of your project. There is some decision you have to take it immediately. So to take any decision immediately, you need these guys, you need the top management to be with you. So, you, so your decision, it will not take many steps until you get it. Because if a, there is a decision in the supervision uh, position, for example, and you need to take uh, immediate uh, action on that one. So you need to wait until you make a meeting with the top management and then can decide. And this is, will take one day, two days, three days, maybe one week if someone or one of them is, is not available. So in Six Sigma project, we will recommend the decision makers, they have to be with you. So they will reduce the time, they will reduce the waste of waiting uh, in order to take a uh, decision. Also getting them start project, a uh, huge challenge for Six Sigma. Also they will be with you and they will take this challenge uh, with you and they will help you during this uh, project. Uh, okay, someone has seen problem and realize I'm fixing problem uh, and have a great return of investment. This is also you will use their, their experience because they have uh, expand knowledge. There is a, some, uh, some knowledge in, in some area you doesn't know. For example, you are the sales uh, manager, but there is a problem in finance. You didn't see it. There is a problem in IT. You didn't see it. But he, but as a top management, he see all this problem because all this department report to him. 
so he knows what is what is the details for this uh, inside this uh, department. So that that why it's better uh, to make him with you in the in the project. Okay, this person uh, should be the company executive committee and Six Sigma project and support resource needing complete the project. As we told, there is many resources you will need. For example, you will need a consultant. If you have, for example, an issue in HR, but the team in HR, what you have in your company, they have a limited knowledge. So in this case, you need to get a consultant. So to get the consultant, that means there is a cost. So it is better to keep them with you in, in, the, uh, in the project, so they will help you and they will approve whatever you need, the cost you need, the budget you need, so you will get direct uh, approval from them. Okay, guys? So let us go for the structure of the team. How will form the team? How many uh, member of the team? Okay. We have the champions. And what is the rule for the champions? The champions, they provide direction and leading the chain. I think we will repeat again what we said earlier. They are the one who is providing the direction if your, your Six Sigma project go a little bit out of the, of the line, they can get you back again. They will tell you what is the direction you have to follow. Because as we mentioned, they have uh, expanded knowledge than everyone. So also they are leading the chain. You are here as a Six Sigma project. You are doing this project, why? Because you need to change. You need to change process. You need to change mindset. You need to change uh, new culture. You need to change a new procedure. So you need someone who to be with you and leading this chain. So this is the one of the, of the rule. Also, identify the scope of the project, where you start this project. There is a problem, for example, related to HR and related to finance in the same time. So you need someone to, to tell you, no, this is the scope of HR. It's not a scope of, of, of finance. Uh, even there is some link between them, but they will give you the direct scope and they will give you uh, the direct uh, or the correct direction. Also developing, uh, develops uh, the strategy, as we mentioned. They are the one who knows well where we are going and we are supposed to be after 10 years from now. So uh, this is one of their, of their rules, uh, development and strategy. Also support culture of change, all cultural change. This is, we mentioned also uh, in the, uh, the previous slide. You need them in order to guarantee that the culture of continuous improvement has been uh, adopted inside uh, the company before you leave. If you leave without this one, they will go back to the start point. So you need them and, and they are the one who is supporting the culture and change. And also uh, ident uh, identity and coaching the master black belt. So the champion who is uh, coaching the master black. If you want to go from black, from green to black, you need a black uh, belt to teach you or to coach you. If you are going from master black to uh, champions, you need the champions to teach you. So this is one of their rules. So the champion has to be how many champions you need in your team. Just take, uh, take this example. This team, it will be expand. When we mention that the, the, the master black will be expand more. So how many, how many member you need from the, from the black, uh, sorry, from the champion? This is the one champion who is leading. How many master black he need? He need from three to four master black. There is a master black here. There is a master black here. And there is a master black here and there is a champion here. So this is a champion in the Six Sigma team, project team. The champion he should have under his uh, supervision, he need three to four master black. Again, we will see how many master black he need black. Again, you will come with the number. So once we go later, the team expanding. 
Okay, so just just to have an idea about uh, about the team. Okay, who is next? Next is a black. Uh, sorry, master black belt. So master black belt. What is his main role? Master black belt. He is teaching and coaching the green uh, the green belt, and also he is uh, functional leaders. So the functional leader for the uh, for the for the six sigma project. There is a six sigma project. He can lead alone or he can lead with the champion. How many he needs? He needs uh, three or four black under him. So under his supervision, we, he needs uh, four, uh, three to four uh, must, uh, black. Okay. We said this is a champion. Champion is having three or four master black. Master black, one master black. He needs under him how many? three to four black okay three to four black here also needs three to four bullet under each one of them we will come to the black under each black how many will have a master black so the black is what is the rule for the black applying the strategy who is putting the strategy the champion who is putting the strategy what is the rule for the black applying the strategy and to specific the project, leading direct team to execute the project. So this is his uh, his role. And also he is uh, teaching and he is coaching the green. Okay, how many uh, green he need to be under him? Also three to four. So this is this is the master black. This is the black, and this is the black. He need also uh, three to four uh, green uh, under him. So this is the green. Okay, now the team is expanding. So just to have idea about the Six Sigma team and Six Sigma project, as we told, you are working in 10 to $15 million. You are coming to bankrupt company. You need to move it from, uh, from minus until uh, get a profit for 10 million, 50 million, whatever. Okay, so what about the green? The green is supporting the black belt by participating in the project team. So he is supporting the black. This is one of his, uh, his roles. Uh, so every green belt, he can have many yellow as much as he needs. So we said this is a champion. One champion should be three to four master black under him. Uh, master black, he can have only master black he should have three to four black under him. Okay. And one black, he needs three to four green under his supervision. So this is the green. Green, how many yellow you need? It depends on the project size. He can, he can request for 10, he can request for seven, he can request for any number. It depends on the, on the project. A small project, no need big number. Big project, he need more more uh, yellow because what is the yellow is doing? Yellow, he is collecting the data and organizing organizing the data, and the green he will make analyze the data and he will report it to the to the black in order to take a decision. Okay, so what about uh, what about us? What about you as a yellow? So yellow build, he's a team member, supporting the green, uh, participating in the project. And he should be familiar with the structure methodology. What is the structure methodology? You remember the math? You remember the math? D, M, A, I, C. This is, we call it a structured uh, methodology. So in the exam, if you ask you about the structured methodology, this is the math. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. This is a structured methodology. And uh, the use of cross-function tools and technique. What is the cross-function tools and technique? You remember we have six laws, six laws of calculating the Six Sigma project. Six laws we are using to calculate the Six Sigma level because you need when you enter from the, from the main gate to the company, before you start doing everything, you need to calculate the current Six Sigma level. 
In order to calculate this current six sigma level, you need to have a cross functioning tool because we said there is a, a arithmetic uh, equation. You will do it and, and you will have a number. You, this number, you will enter it to the six sigma calculator and then it will give you the, uh, the six sigma level. So this is what we call the cross functioning, uh, cross functional uh, technique and tools. This is the six law of six sigma or the calculation uh, method that we are using uh, for six sigma. Okay, so this is this is about the team of uh, forming the team or structure of the team of the six sigma project. That said, no, there is a one guy very important guy even if you have all these uh, uh, guys all these members you have a champion you have a master black you have four to three uh, black uh, belt you have a green you have yellow can we start the project the answer is no there is a one guy is missing and this guy he is very important and this guy cannot start the project without him even you have all this team even you have all this experience, even you have all this uh, qualification. This guy, we call it the matter, subject matter expert. Subject matter expert. Who is the subject matter expert? Who is the one is proficient in the project process? For example, what means he's a proficient? If we now, now we are in uh, this, in this training, now the audience, we have one from finance, Mr. Magic. We have one from uh, supply chain, Nawaz. We have three from uh, sales. If we said this project, I need, I need to hear your, your, uh, your answer, guys. If we said this project will be on sales issue, there is a one problem in the sales. Who will be the, uh, the uh, subject matter expert here? Come on, guys. Who will be? The one who is professional in his, uh, the professional in the project, the professional in the sales department. Yes, that is good answer. So, so here, the subject matter expert, if we said this problem, it will be in sales, in, in our team here right now, the subject matter expert, he will be Bali or Ahmed or Sayyid, because they are sales. They know better than us in sales. But if we said this project will be on finance, who is the matter expert? Will be Magic. Yes, you are right. He will be Magic. If we said this, this subject, uh, this uh, Six Sigma project will be on IT, who will be? I will be the subject matter expert. Yes, correct. So now it is clear who is the subject matter expert, the one who is professional, the one who is having more experience in the uh, project or in the Six Sigma project. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I mean, the Six Sigma project problem. Where is the problem in, in HR? So the subject matter expert should be one from HR and should be one of the top uh, from HR. And he's supposed to be, and he's supposed to be, which, uh, which belt he is, he is supposed to have from here. See guys, from here, he's supposed to be one of this. So not, uh, not yellow. He's supposed to be green certified or black certified or master black certified or to be uh, a champion, but he is not, he is not a yellow belt. Yellow belt, he can be a subject matter expert only in, in the green belt project. So as we mentioned yesterday, there is a small project, small project, we call it green, uh, green belt uh, project. What is, we call it assignment, uh, project assignment. This is a small project in a small company, uh, uh, small size of, of, of business, the, the green he can lead it. The green he can lead the project. No need for black and master black or even, uh, even a champion. 
In this case, the subject matter expert can be can be a yellow bird. But if you have a big project, if you are working in 10 million, 20, 15 million dollars, the subject matter expert, he should be a green or black, master black or champion uh, certified. Okay, guys, clear? So this is this is uh, the summary of the structure of uh, the, uh, Six Sigma team. You should have a champions and there is the many uh, rules for the champions and you have to be uh, careful in the exam. You will have, they will give you this in the, in the, in the question and you will get one of these in the, in the multi choice. You will get one of them. So why, what is the rule for the champion or own vision uh, organization? He will give you, for example, providing direction and lead chain. We'll give you three uh, wrong uh, choice. You have to choose this. Okay, guys. So this is this is a, a structure of the team. You should have a champion in your team. Uh, minimum one champion. The one champion he needs three to four master black. Master black, he need uh, three to four uh, black build. And the black build, he needs three or to four uh, green build. And the green build, he can have uh, any number he need uh, depends on the, on the project for, for, for the yellow build. Okay, let us continue uh, for having little uh, uh, fact about the Six Sigma project. So yellow build will participate all the project team meeting and acting in the role of subject matter expert for her, uh, for their function or disability. This is what we mentioned. If, if the project leading by green, you will be the subject matter expert as a yellow. If the subject, if the, if the, if the project is, is, is a big project leading by champions, the, the, the yellow cannot be subject matter expert. But what is mentioning here is, he is participating in the team, all the meeting, he will be attend all the meeting and he will be a subject matter expert in his function, in his, uh, in his uh, position, in his uh, expert. He's expert in HR, he should be from HR. He's expert in finance, he should go to the project that related to uh, finance. Also the yellow build uh, role, the forming uh, conjunction with their normal full-time job and, uh, and position. So if you are a uh, team, uh, six team project member, you have another job you need to do. If, if you are a finance, for example, you're working in the finance and you are already member of the team, there is a team uh, Six Sigma project is running on the HR, they are fixing some problem and you are part of that uh, project. When coming the time for processing the, the barrel, or the salaries, you said, no, I'm busy. I don't have time. I'm a member of Six Sigma project. Get someone to process uh, the salary. No, it is not right. It doesn't mean that you are totally ignoring your job just because you are Six Sigma project team. No, you have to do the same job you are used to doing, but little bit you will be busy with, the, with Six Sigma project and this is normal. So it, it doesn't mean that you are a member of Six Sigma project, you forget about your uh, daily job. Six Sigma also the, the, the yellow. Uh, Six Sigma have many yellow builds member and need based upon the scope of the process and being investigated and nature of the problem. So as we mentioned, the, the, the needs of the green. The green we didn't put uh, a number for, for, the, uh, for the yellow build that he will need. So the yellow build can be as much as he, he need. If you have a big project, you will need more uh, yellow build. If there is a small project, you need uh, a small uh, number of the of yellow build because they are the one who is collecting and organizing the data. And even they are uh, giving you, uh, uh, I mean, like the classification of the data, whether it is, uh, whether it is discrete or whether it is uh, continuous data. Also, the training uh, uh, yellow build normally focus on the structure of the six sigma methodology and use the cross function 
uh, problem and use a technique. What we call it cross function. We said cross function. This is a six law. Uh, what we saw yesterday is a six law of calculation. And what we said uh, six sigma is about semi accounting, semi calculation uh, methodology. It's not only uh, a theoretical methodology or theoretical uh, technique. So there is a, a technique, uh, a tools and technique. You will use it in order to calculate your uh, Six Sigma level. And also you have to be aware of the uh, structure of the Six Sigma. As we mentioned earlier, structure of the Six Sigma, what is called, we call it the MAC. So the MAC is the structure of Six Sigma uh, methodology. Okay, uh, the detailed Six Sigma analyze the normal handling by the green belt or black belt and who is leading the project. The yellow belt team member often owns who collecting the data. Okay, this is what we mentioned earlier. Analyzing, helping interpret the result of the analysis. You will not do the analysis. The one who is, is doing the analysis is the black belt and the green belt. The one who is taking the decision is the black belt and green belt. The one who is leading the project is the black belt and, and yellow belt. So just you will collect the data, organizing the data, help on uh, organizing the data, help on interpret the data, as we mentioned, help on uh, class, classify the data, which is discrete or, or a continuous data. Okay, guys. Uh, yellow build team member also perform implementation of the solution uh, within their respective function and uh, discipline. This is also we mentioned. Uh, they will be uh, implementing the solution within their expert, within their function, within their position. So if, if the, the, the solution is related to HR and you are uh, yellow build and you have a HR background, you will be uh, having the priority to implement this solution because you have more awareness about HR. But if you if the implementation of this solution is about finance, then you are not uh, the first priority. Someone else who will be the first priority to implement this solution. He is supposed to be from uh, from finance. Okay, guys. So uh, coming for person with the yellow certification to be member of multiple Six Sigma project. Uh, at the same time, according to the field specification. This is what means you can be a member of two, three, four, six Sigma projects in the same time. Depends on your capacity, depends on, on your, uh, uh, the time that you have, depends on your, uh, your energy. If, if you are still young, same like uh, Majid or same like, uh, Bali, so you, you will be more, more offensive. You will be, have more energy. You can participate in one, two, three, uh, six Sigma project. If you are a little bit older than me, uh, take one or two, just focus on one or two. So there is no any, any, any conjunction. There is no any limitation to be a member of any uh, of uh, particular or uh, specific number of Six Sigma project. You can be a member of one or two or three, Six Sigma project based on your background, based on your knowledge, based on your profession. If there is a, a Six Sigma project in IT, in finance, in HR, and you have background, you have uh, professional, uh, like professional skills, professional qualification, you can, you can participate on this uh, Six Sigma project in the same times. There is no issue for that. Okay, guys, so the Six Sigma project cannot be started without approval from the top management. Definitely, you cannot do it. Why you cannot do it, we will see later. So this is one of the facts uh, we need to be aware of. The Six Sigma project doesn't start without approval uh, from the top management. Whether the CEO, whether he is a uh, uh, owners, whether it's, 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 we call them later, we call them, there is one terminology we call uh, stakeholder. So wh wh whatever they are uh, names, you have to take their approval. You have to take their approval because you need their support. You need their approval. You need budget. You need a consultant. 
you need to have uh, multiple, uh, for example, uh, team member. You need them for the time. They will negotiate with the department managers. Do we need one or two or three from your department to be member of Six Sigma? So that there is a big delay on some process on that department. So the department manager, he will not allow you to get one or two, three from his department. But once you have the approval from the management, he can release them uh, immediately. Okay. So therefore you need, uh, there is a responsibility uh, for those who want to start Project Six Sigma. Uh, you need to convince the management. And this is like you are selling product to your customer. Now you are a Six Sigma leader, a Six Sigma project leader or Six Sigma project uh, advocate. Uh, uh, yeah, you can, we can say advocate. You need to convince the management to start the Six Sigma project. This is seem to be like you are selling your product to your customer. So you need to have uh, a big knowledge about the problem that we are going to solve. You should have uh, the qualification of, of the speaking. You should have a qualification of convincing. So that same like you are doing now, guys, you are a professional sales. So it's not easy to convince your customer to get your, your product because he will tell you your price is high. Your quality is not same like uh, X company. So you need to have uh, some special uh, qualification, special skills communication in order to convince them, in order to take their approval for this uh, project. And you have to be prepared because they will ask you many questions. You have to be prepared. You have uh, to be uh, aware. You have to study your problem very well because the knowing problem, if you know the problem very well, you can explain it. But if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a knowledge, you have little knowledge about the problem, you cannot explain it. So if yourself, you don't understand the problem, how you will deliver to the, to the top management. So sure you will, you will feel in that one. So you have to prepare yourself, be prepared. There is a many question uh, need to be uh, asked. So why do you want this project? How long uh, it will take? How long the problem is exist? So you need to prepare yourself. Do you know the solution? Do you know the root cause? Be careful, don't mention root cause. Don't mention solution. If you mention any kind of solution, if you mention any root cause, the problem will be the, the, the Six Sigma will, project will be no more. So you will, you will bury your, your Six Sigma project before it starts. Once you are uh, going to, uh, to convince the, the, the top management to start Six Sigma project and in the defined phase, we will go deeply on that one and we'll go by details on the problem uh, statement. In the problem statement, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a form for the problem statement. There is something you need to mention and something you need to avoid to mention. One of the something you need to avoid to mention the root cause and solution. Because if you mention root cause, you mention uh, solution, you remember GDI. If you remember GDI, what means GDI? Just do it. So you have to be prepared. Don't mention root cause. Don't mention any, uh, any uh, solution for that. Okay, guys? Okay. We have here, uh, two type of variation. Okay, this is also uh, including the fact of Six Sigma uh, project. Within your organization, within your project, Six Sigma project, you will find many type of data. You will collect many types of data. And we, we said there is a two types of data uh, divided by uh, 12, six continuous and six discrete. Here we'll tell you there is a two type of variation. Once you're collecting your data, this is that it has to be classified to uh, two type of variation. We have what we call it common cause variation. So what means common cause variation? Okay, for example, you are going from your home every day 
seven o'clock. Okay, seven o'clock you will leave home. You will reach here seven thirty. You will reach your office seven thirty. Okay. Every day this is happening. This is a common. Sometimes you will reach seven. 7.35, for example. Sometimes you will read 7.25. And this is the norm. Five minutes, maybe there is, a, you find someone in your parking and you call him and he came and he took uh, his car and you bark in your parking. This is five minutes. You are going in the elevator, in the elevator there is a two guys or three guys and there is a restriction. Uh, due to COVID-19, cannot be two or three, more than five in the elevator. So you are waiting until they go and they come back again, the elevator empty, you can take the elevator. This is, it will take two to three uh, minutes. So normally, normally every day you are coming 7.30 to your office. And this is the common. This is, we call it uh, common cause variation. What means common cause variation? Always present. Okay, and always expected and normal. It is normal to have the normally you are coming 3.30, normally you are coming five minutes earlier, five minutes uh, later. And, and this is one we call loss of causes. There is a many causes for this, uh, uh, for this uh, common cause. The common cause has many lots of causes. Uh, and each one of them little effect. There is no effect common cause variation, there is no effect on the common cause. If you come to an, uh, 725 or 735, it is nothing. Yeah, it's nothing, cannot be mentioned even. You cannot tell your, your manager I'm, I'm, I'm delaying five minutes or I came earlier five minutes. He will not care even because this is, this is a normal and there is no effect. There is no effect. If you have, for example, uh, if you have, or for example, you are, uh, sales coordinator, and you have to create daily 10 sales order. You have a target daily 10 sales order. Five minutes, it will not affect your 10, uh, 10 sales order. Five minutes only, it will not affect. This is what you call it, they have little effect. Okay? And difficult to identify. You cannot identify which time you came late, uh, late five minutes, or which time you come uh, earlier. It is very difficult. You cannot identify. And um, difficult to eliminate. You cannot remove it. Elimination means remove the waste or defect from this process. So even you cannot realize it. If you cannot identify it, then you cannot eliminate it. You cannot remove it. So this is, we call it, all we call it common cause variation. In the green belt, in the green and higher, we call it inherent uh, variability. But in the yellow belt, we call it only uh, common cause variation. So the common cause variation is always present, always expected and normal. So they have limit uh, effect. Uh, there is uh, many reason for that one, can be any reason, uh, cannot be identified, and even you cannot be uh, eliminated. In the opposite, we have a special cause. So what means a special cause? You used to come 7.30, but somehow you came 8.30. So 8.30, that means something happened. This is special because you are a disciplined guy and you are the perfect employee and you used to come on time. But suddenly you came 8.30. That means that something happened. That means something happened uh, in, your, in your way to, to, the, to your office. So, yeah, yeah, you are right. So something happened, maybe there is accident, okay? You came to the, to the same road you are using to take every day. So there is an accident happening there. So Najm is there, they are coming and taking the, uh, uh, all the details, all the, uh, and there is an ambulance also is coming. So there is a delay, something happened. So what we call it, this is, we call it a special cause. A special cause, something not happen uh, always. So all, it's not always uh, present and not expected. And also it is not normal, not normal. You are coming every day 7.30 and suddenly you come 8.30. So this is, we call it 
uh, special cause variation. One of the characteristics for the special cause, it, it's a few causes. There is a few causes uh, uh, in, in, in bad things that uh, to happen. So uh, uh, accident or your car is, uh, is not starting or uh, someone stole your car, uh, you used to take the bus and the bus uh, is taking another direction. Uh, there is a construction in the, in the, in the way. So there can be, can be uh, a few causes in happening. And there is an effect. Because we strike example about the sales coordinator and said, he's supposed to do 10 sales order a day, but unfortunately he is late one hour. So he cannot do this 10. He can make eight or seven sales order a day. So there is an effect. There is an effect that means there is a special cause variation is happening here. And it is easy, easy to identify because there is a one hour or or uh, more than one hour delay. So there is, uh, you can identify and you can eliminate. So once you identify, then you can eliminate, then you can address this, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, cause, uh, special cause variation. So the summary for this slide, guys, we have two types of variation. We have a common cause variation, which is always represented which is always normal and expected to have been. There is no effect or it has a little bit of effect. Uh, you cannot identify, even you cannot uh, remember if you came late, if you, if you done came late yesterday, uh, yesterday or last week. And the, uh, uh, in the uh, opposite, we have the special cause. Special cause, something not always represent. Your target is 10 million per month. Suddenly you came up with a one or a one and a half or two million, two million per month. You you have to you have to collect. You used to have to collect on one one million, but in this time you collect two million. What is happening? No, there is a special cause for that. Definitely there is special cause. Whatever this special cause is, uh, uh, it is it is positive or negative. We call it a special cause. If it is a special cause, uh, positive special cause that means you need to apply for the whole of your uh, for example your uh, your your uh, an annual target an annual target is 12 million in one month you get 2 million there is a special cause so you need to uh, to analyze what is the reason behind this 2 million if you get the reason behind this 2 million you can use it and apply it for the whole of the year so instead of collecting uh, 1 million, you can collect uh, 2 million and you will, you will increase your collection from 12 to 24 or less than 24. So whatever the, the special cause, it is positive or negative, negative, you need to eliminate, you need to remove it, you need to address it immediately in order to keep your data stable and sustainable. Is a positive cause, you need to address it, you need to use it and apply it for the for the whole of the process. Okay, guys. So, uh, what the type of uh, uh, of, uh, of variation? Why is the knowledge of variation is very important? Or uh, it define the improved strategy. So, as we mentioned, if if you have the special cause, whatever is negative or positive, you can use it. Positive, you can use it for your strategy. So. Uh, as a, your uh, uh, sales manager. So there is something happening in the, for one salesman, he get 2 million per month. He's supposed to collect 1 million, but he collect 2 million. You have to take it uh, seriously, analyze it. Why you get 2 million instead of 1 million? He will tell you, I, I have a new, uh, uh, new company with a new contract. You need to start analyzing, you need to start to study that contract and you can apply it for all your team. And this is we consider as a strategy. Also, it tell you what is the process is stable or unstable. Because you remember in the, I, uh, in the IC, there is a, we call it uh, the heart rate. The heart rate is going like this, correct? This is, we call it normal and stable. Suddenly this man, his heart rate is going like this. What means? Means is not 
sustainable. This is something happening to this guy during this time. So you need to call the doctor and the doctor, he will come and make uh, analyze for the situation of this patient. Then he can get it back to the normal. So this is what we call it. It will help you uh, to stable and make the process uh, stable. It will realize which it is stable or non-stable. If it's going like this, that means it is stable. Stable means it is common cause. But if you have like this going up and down, this is, we call it a special cause. So you need to address it. So one of the benefits of, uh, of the type of the variation, it will tell you inside your process, whether it is stable or unstable. Uh, also, uh, procedure under the influence of common cause are stable. And on the opposite, the procedure under the influence of a special cause, it is unstable. This is what we said here. Normal, normal uh, uh, heart rate, this is stable. Unnormal heart rate, this is not stable. This is, we call it common cause, and this is, we call it uh, influenced by special cause. And also, uh, any study is a procedure lead to customer this uh, satisfaction and we mentioned in the first lecture uh, in the first lecture yes if your target as a company not is the customer satisfaction you need to shut down your business immediately shut down your business close your company release your employee because this is has to be the main target for your customer satisfaction it has to be the main target for any kind of business customer uh, sorry uh, hotel uh, uh, is hospital, uh, manufacturer, commercial business, whatever. This is, has to be your period. The common cause, uh, sorry, the variation, the type of variation will help you uh, to study the procedure, lead, by, lead to the customer satisfaction. If there is a discustomer satisfaction, that is, means you have something uh, wrong in your uh, bossy. Okay, guys. We have a small, small, very small example in the, in the sales. This is the example we have. This is a collection for one salesman. Uh, during one week, he used to collect, uh, or he used to sell 100, 98, 105, 95, suddenly 150. So here, this 150, we call it a special cause. Special cause means not happening. Uh, it's not normal. It's not expected to happen, so we call it a special cause. So again, come to the normal 98, and again, a uh, special cause is happening. This is lack of staff, lack of knowledge, lack of experience, lack of uh, resources. We don't have a car. We don't have, uh, for example, legal uh, uh, legal papers. So this is, we call it a special cause. A special cause, whatever it is, it is positive, or it is negative. So you need to work on that special cause. So you can, uh, yeah, also no material, for example, it can be one of the reasons for the poor, uh, poor collection. So all of this, what you need to know about the two types of, uh, of variation, we have a special cause variation and we have a common cause uh, variation. So here, this is the example. And by the way, this is an example we, we, we have it during our, our discussion. We said this guy, he used to come uh, at uh, 8.50 and 8.55 up to nine. So he used to come in this range. And this is, we call it common uh, variation. Okay, in the next, he came and yeah, we call it also as acceptable and uh, it can be, uh repeated means it can be repeated means every day he is coming uh during this time he is coming uh, at 850 or 855 or nine this is acceptable your manager he will ask will not ask you why you come late because it is five minutes earlier or more and always it can be happen always can be repeated okay this is uh we call it common cause variation uh, in the opposite, we have 
uh, we have the uh, special cause variation. Uh, this is the one he came now, 8.30. So 8.30, that means half an hour uh, delay. So that means something happened. So it's not uh, acceptable. Your manager will ask you why you come late uh, or why you, yeah, why you come late. You used to come at 30, but you came nine and will not be repeated. So this one, special call, it will happen one time. There is an accident in, in the road. So it will not be every day there is an accident. So it will not be repeated uh, every day. Okay, guys. So, uh this is some time uh or some ki kind of reason he can be oversleep he can be miss the bus or whatever we uh during our uh, explaining we go all through that one so it will be unexpected this is a special cause and it's unacceptable and it will be uh, not repeated again okay we have uh one hour guys Almost one hour. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, uh, I can address this one or we'll see it later. I have one slide. Only one slide. From here, it will be for for tomorrow. I have only this one slide. I need to address the the VOC. Okay, guys. Yeah, only one slide. Okay, we'll go. Okay, this is the most. Uh, also, one of the most important reason to start Six Sigma is about collecting uh, the VOC. The VOC is uh, the voice of the customer. So the voice of the customer is very important uh, in your uh, project. The voice of customer is one of, of, of the way of collecting the, uh, the problem. So if you are desired to solve the problem, who is the root cause are unknown. And there is a many problem, the most important of which uh, effect, you don't have the root cause, you don't have the, the solution. So you need to take the feedback from the customer. You need to collect the data from your customer. So collecting the, the data from the customer, uh, getting the feedback, in Six Sigma, we call it the voice of the customer. Whatever the customer is uh, internal customer or external customer, we will know that in details tomorrow. But here, uh, you need to collect your uh, voice or VOC from the customer. And there is a two uh, kind of way you can use it to collect this uh, VOC. One of this way is uh, uh, complain. This is the direct from the customer. If you have a compliance system, you will receive the complaint from the customer direct or from the customer escalation. Escalation means the number of customer you have is start to be reduced. So if you have, for example, uh, 100 customer, one day you came, you get the report, there is only 95 customer. This is what we call it uh, escalation. So this is that means you need to take uh, one of uh, one of the way to collect the VOC. One of the way to collect the VOC is uh, customer complaint or customer escalation, whatever is increasing or reducing the the number of the customer. So this is the two way of collecting the VOC. Secondly, we have VOP. VOP means the voice of the business. So also to identify. Uh, your cust your uh, uh, problems, uh, root cause. And uh, this is a one of way of collecting the VOC. Collecting the VOC for what? To get the root cause. What is the root cause here? We call in Six Sigma, we call it the X. So you need to collect the X. You need to know what is the X, what is the root cause of the problem. You need to collect the VOC. You need to collect the VOP. So what is the VOP? VOP is the voice of business. So what means the voice of business? How we will collect the voice of business? How you will realize them? The reduce of, uh, of attrition. So you have a bad attrition outside, for example. So the way of, of collecting the VOC is 
by observing and by analyzing, by asking the customer about your uh, attrition. If it is bad or if it is good, uh, someone will tell you, no, this is company is very bad company, you will not deal again. They are delaying in the delivery, they are delaying, uh, they, they don't have uh, fulfillment for their uh, promise. So this is one type of, of the VOC or uh, sorry, VOP uh, kind of customer, uh, uh, voice of business. Also is using the uh, absenism. Absenism here is about uh, what we call it uh, re resignation. You have very high number of uh, resignation. Many HR, they are receiving resignation. So you need to focus on reducing this uh, absenism or resignation. So this is, uh, we call it VOS, v, v, o, uh, VOP, voice of the business. So one of the way collecting the voice of the business, one of, uh, of the way collecting the access, the root cause is a VOP and the VOP you will collect with, uh, uh, with observing and checking about the uh, reducing the absenism, reducing the resignation of the employee. Also uh, reducing the cycle time. Also reducing uh, uh, the repeated errors. This is all uh, ways of collecting the root cause. This is many ways of collecting the VOP, which is the uh, voice of, of business. What means voice of business again? So voice of business, you will address and you will observe your process. If you have a good attrition of your company or you have a bad, this is one of the way it will tell you, maybe there is a reason, uh, common, uh, sorry, uh, a root cause behind that one. Reducing the absenteeism, reducing the resignation. This is where you will see it from the business. Reducing the cycle time. Uh, so you have many, many, uh, many wasting of the time you have many repeated errors, you have uh, rejected uh, orders, you have wrong delivery, you are delivering wrong material, you are delivering to a wrong customer. How many you have? You have a 10, you need to reduce it, okay? So this is what we mean by voice of business. We have the last one, it is a voice uh, or VOB. This is a viewpoint of people. Who is this people? These people, we call them a stockholder analysis. So the root cause, it can be come from the uh, stakeholder. Who is the stakeholder? Who is the one is owning the, de the, the decision? Who is the decision maker? He can be the owner, he can be the CEO, he can be the GM, he can be uh, whatever any names, but this is, we call them a stakeholder. The decision maker, we call them a stakeholder. You can sit with them, one of the way of collecting the access, one of the ways collecting the root cause, you can sit with them, you can ask them because they have, uh, uh, what, uh, as we mentioned earlier, they have expanded knowledge. They have awareness more about the business. So they can help you and they will can lead you uh, direct to the root of the cause. So once you have the root of the cause, you need to start solving that root uh, of the cause. So now you are ready to start your uh, Six Sigma project. Now you are ready, uh, you are ready to find the critical point, uh, what we call critical to the quality of CPQ. This is later on, we will, we will discuss it in, uh, in details. After you've done all this one, now you are ready to start your uh, Six Sigma project. Tomorrow we will start the uh, the mac we will go in details with the mac we will start with define okay and we'll go through the major we'll go through the analyze and improvement and finally in the control now tomorrow we will discuss in details about define what you are doing in the define how many steps you have to do it what is the procedure you have to follow uh, in the define phase Okay, guys, I'm done. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you so much. Christian. Thank you, brother. You are welcome. You are welcome. Okay, guys.
Okay. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you.